there I was, high in the air, one leg dangling behind me and the other hanging, I mean, squeezing for dear life under the thin metal bar that was part of the aerial contraption I was performing on. Below me was the Philadelphia Orchestra, playing brilliantly, and the sold out audience was listening expectantly to every note that I was playing on my violin with as much beauty and precision as possible for the violin solo parts from Vivaldi's Summer from the Four Seasons. So the way my act works is that I play the violin solos and then in between I do aerial acrobatics on this apparatus high in the air. On this particular occasion I was very scared because the riggers had lifted me higher than I'd ever gone before. It felt like a hundred feet. I had no connection to the ground and the only thing holding me in the air and keeping me alive was my left leg. I had to focus. It's kind of a scary act. And if you don't focus, well, you know, you die. There's a funny thing about being afraid for your life. It makes all those other fears diminish. Like, what do people think of me? I've always had a struggle with that. I was really pursuing a violin solo career as a classical artist and fighting stage fright was something that I really was trying to get a handle on. I remember doing my Carnegie Hall debut recital and I can't say I enjoyed one minute of it. Well, except when it was over. I had my heart in my throat from the minute I walked on stage until when I did that final bow. And it was really frustrating because I never could perform quite like I knew I could. My fingers would freeze and my muscles would tense up and, well, that never really produces the best results. How did I get the courage to do something as crazy as playing violin up in the air? Well, about 10 years earlier, something had happened. I was, I had gone to the Juilliard School of Music and was graduating and realized that I had to pay off those student loans. And I learned that the United States Army had a program where you could actually do three years of service and they would pay off your loans tax-free. And plus I got a salary for practicing and playing and playing for the president once in a while. It was not a bad deal until I had to go to basic training. In basic training there was a confidence course. It's basically a field of a bunch of grueling exercises where you have to do all sorts of things but the one was a terrifying course. You had to climb up this tree trunk ladder. It was about 30 feet. And then at the top, there was a rope. You had to hoist your legs up there, grab under the metal bar, and slide down to the ground. I was afraid of heights. And plus, I was wearing really heavy boots, canteen, water canteens that weighed a lot, and plus the heavy helmet, and the jacket, and the stiff clothes, and, and I also had injured my leg. I had pulled it running, and I uh, had barely come off crutches. Well, the first 15 feet that I climbed was okay. But then that paralyzing fear washed all over me and I could hardly move. The drill sergeant yelled at me, Martin, move it! So I tried to show some enthusiasm as I grabbed slightly higher, but I guess I was moving too slowly because he came down to my face level and said, I said, move it! That got me up to the top, where I looked down and knew that I was at the time of my death. After a few more encouraging words from the drill sergeant, I put my hands on that metal bar, and somehow I hoisted my legs up onto the rope, and I slid all the way down to the ground. I did it. I did it. I was elated. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I really didn't think I could do it. And having done something you really didn't think you could do, well, it changes you. Something was definitely different. I can't say that I've been courageous and heroic every single instance after that event, but there was a seed that was planted by that. Because I realized that when you feel the fear and you do it anyway, a whole world opens up to you. That's how I learned to fly. And I'm going to teach you how to
how you can too.